The Alexander Kielin drilling rig disaster was one of the worst offshore oil rig disasters in history, which occurred on March 27, 1980. The rig was a semi-submersible drilling platform that was operated by Stavanger Drilling as in the Ekofisk oil field in the North Sea, off the coast of Norway. The incident resulted in the deaths of 123 workers and had a significant impact on offshore safety regulations around the world. The disaster occurred when a sudden and violent storm hit the rig, causing one of its five legs to fail and resulting in the platform capsizing and sinking within minutes. Most of the workers were trapped inside the rig, and despite the efforts of rescue teams, only 89 of the 212 people on board survived the incident. The cause of the disaster was ultimately traced to a design flaw in the rig's support structure, which had not been detected during the rig's construction or subsequent inspections. The investigation revealed that the design of the platform's support structure was not sufficient to withstand the forces of a North Sea storm, and that the flaw had been compounded by inadequate maintenance and inspections. The Alexander Kielin disaster had a profound impact on the offshore oil industry, and led to significant changes in safety regulations and practices around the world. The Ocean Ranger oil rig disaster occurred on February 15, 1982, when the Ocean Ranger, a semi-submersible drilling platform, capsized and sank off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada. The incident resulted in the deaths of all 84 people on board, and remains one of the deadliest offshore oil rig disasters in history. The Ocean Ranger was operated by Mobile Oil Canada and was drilling for oil in the Hibernia oil field in the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 267 kilometers east of St. John's, Newfoundland. At the time of the disaster, the rig was experiencing high winds and rough seas, but had not been evacuated. The exact cause of the disaster was never conclusively determined, but it is believed that the rig capsized and sank due to a combination of design flaws, human error, and harsh weather conditions. Investigators later found that the rig's ballast control system had failed, causing it to become unstable and leading to its eventual capsizing. The crew had attempted to manually control the ballast system, but were unable to do so due to the harsh weather conditions. The Ocean Ranger disaster had a profound impact on the offshore oil industry and led to significant changes in safety regulations and practices. The incident prompted a comprehensive review of offshore safety regulations in Canada, and led to the establishment of the Canada Newfoundland Offshore Petroleum Board, which was tasked with overseeing safety and environmental issues related to offshore drilling. In addition to the regulatory changes, the Ocean Ranger disaster also had a significant impact on the culture of safety within the offshore oil industry. The incident highlighted the need for companies to prioritize safety over productivity and profits, and to ensure that all equipment and procedures were thoroughly tested and inspected to prevent similar disasters from occurring in the future. The Glomar Java Sea oil rig disaster occurred on November 3, 1983, when a fire broke out on the Glomar Java Sea, a semi-submersible oil rig located in the Java Sea off the coast of Indonesia. The incident resulted in the deaths of 82 people and was one of the deadliest offshore oil rig disasters in history. The Glomar Java Sea was operated by the Dutch company, Hirama, and was drilling for oil in the Sunda Strait, a narrow passage between the islands of Java and Sumatra. At the time of the incident, the rig was experiencing high winds and rough seas, but had not been evacuated. The exact cause of the disaster is not known, but it is believed that the fire may have started in the rig's kitchen area and spread quickly due to the presence of highly flammable materials on board, including diesel fuel and lubricants. The fire quickly engulfed the rig, causing it to capsize and sink into the sea. Rescue efforts were hampered by the harsh weather conditions, and only 41 of the 123 crew members on board the rig were able to be rescued. The remaining 82 crew members were killed in the incident, making it one of the deadliest offshore oil rig disasters in history. The Statfjord a oil rig disaster occurred on 12 April 1985, when the world's largest offshore oil platform, the Statfjord A, was hit by a severe storm in the North Sea, off the coast of Norway. The incident resulted in the death of one worker, and it is considered to be one of the most significant offshore disasters in the history of the oil industry. The Statfjord A was a colossal steel structure, standing over 500 feet tall and weighing over 200,000 tons. It was designed to withstand harsh weather conditions and was equipped with state-of-the-art safety systems. However, on the day of the disaster, the rig was hit by a powerful storm, with waves reaching as high as 40 feet. 
The storm caused severe damage to the rig structure, including the rupture of several ballast tanks and damage to some of the platform's legs. The situation was exacerbated when a supply vessel collided with the platform, causing further damage to the structure. Despite the severe damage, the rig's safety systems managed to prevent a more significant disaster. The platform's ballast system was able to stabilize the rig, preventing it from capsizing, and the evacuation system was successfully deployed, allowing all of the crew members to be safely transported to nearby rescue vessels. The Statfjord a oil rig disaster occurred on 12 April 1985, when the world's largest offshore oil platform, the Statfjord A, was hit by a severe storm in the North Sea, off the coast of Norway. The incident resulted in the death of one worker, and it is considered to be one of the most significant offshore disasters in the history of the oil industry. The Statfjord A was a colossal steel structure, standing over 500 feet tall and weighing over 200,000 tons. It was designed to withstand harsh weather conditions and was equipped with state-of-the-art safety systems. However, on the day of the disaster, the rig was hit by a powerful storm, with waves reaching as high as 40 feet. The storm caused severe damage to the rig structure, including the rupture of several ballast tanks and damage to some of the platform's legs. The situation was exacerbated when a supply vessel collided with the platform, causing further damage to the structure. The Seacrest oil rig disaster of 1989 was a major incident that occurred off the coast of Texas, USA. The disaster was caused by a series of explosions that engulfed the Seacrest drillship, causing extensive damage and resulting in the deaths of 10 workers. On March 10, 1989, the Seacrest drillship was operating in the Gulf of Mexico when an explosion occurred in the mudroom, located on the ship's deck. The explosion was caused by a buildup of natural gas, which ignited and caused a chain reaction that led to several other explosions. The explosions caused significant damage to the ship, and the crew quickly initiated evacuation procedures. The Mumbai High North disaster of 2005 was a major incident that occurred off the coast of India, resulting in the deaths of 22 people and causing significant damage to an offshore oil platform. On July 27, 2005, a major fire broke out on the Mumbai High North oil platform, which was owned and operated by India's state-owned oil and gas company, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation ONGC. The platform was located in the Arabian Sea, approximately 160 kilometers off the coast of Mumbai. The fire was caused by a gas leak, which occurred due to a ruptured pipeline. The gas leak ignited and quickly spread throughout the platform, causing a massive fire that burned for several hours. The platform was evacuated, but 22 workers were trapped and could not be rescued. The Usumacinta Jackup was a drilling platform that was owned by the Mexican oil company, Pemex. The platform was located in the Bay of Campeche, which is a region of the Gulf of Mexico that is known for its high level of oil production. On the day of the disaster, the Usumacinta Jackup was being moved to a new location when it suddenly listed and overturned, causing the platform to sink. The cause of the disaster was later determined to be a failure of the ballast system, which caused the platform to lose stability and tip over. The Innovator Rig disaster of 2015 was a tragic event that occurred on 30 December 2015 in the North Sea, off the coast of Norway. The disaster happened when a semi-submersible drilling rig, the Transocean Winner, ran aground on the Isle of Lewis in Scotland. The Transocean Winner had been on its way from Norway to Malta when it encountered severe weather conditions, causing it to break free from its tow line and drift towards the Scottish coast. Despite efforts to prevent the rig from grounding, it eventually ran aground on the rocky shore of the Isle of Lewis. Thankfully, there were no workers on board the rig at the time of the incident, and no one was injured. The Bohai II oil rig disaster of 2011 was an oil spill that occurred on 4 June 2011 in the Bohai Sea, off the coast of China. The spill happened when an oil rig, owned by China National Offshore Oil Corporation CNOOC, leaked oil into the surrounding waters. The oil rig was located in Peng Lai, in the Bohai Sea, and was operated by ConocoPhillips China COPC, a subsidiary of ConocoPhillips. The spill occurred as a result of a blowout in one of the wells being drilled by COPC. The spill caused significant damage to the marine environment and the local fishing industry, 